first loved me. How do you know he loved you, Pastor? Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He loved me before I knew who I was. He loved me before I could say my name. He loved me before I could call on his name. And when I learned to call on his name, I know that when I call on his name, everything will be all right. God, we've gathered in your house. We've prayed prayers in your name. We've sang songs in your name. We've given a tithe and offering in your name. But now, God, we need to hear from your word. I pray now that you would take me out of self, God. Wrap me up, tie me up, and tangle me up in your spirit. That what I should say will be pleasing in your sight. Last but not least, God, do allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, for you are my Christ, my Redeemer, my Lord, and my Savior. But most of all, God, I found you to be my very best friend. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter number 16. The Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 16. I want to start reading at the 21st verse, the gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter, starting at verse number 21, reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, there you will find these words recorded. Matthew 16 and 21, the Bible reads, from that time, Jesus began to show to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are an offense to me. For you are not mindful of the things of God, but the things of men. Verse 24 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, his disciples, If anyone, if anyone, if anyone, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Going back to verse number 24, then Jesus said, if anyone, if anybody, if I can get uh, real unsanctified, if any one of y'all desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. I want to preach this morning as the Lord would lead me from the thought, the heart of a Christian. My brothers and sisters, this whole ideology of Christianity is directly connected to what we call the heart. The Bible from Genesis to Revelation is 
filled with scripture, sharing with us, instructing us, and teaching us about how the heart, what position the heart needs to be in as we attempt to follow after Christ. Let me prove it to you. Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. This particular verse is convey, conveying the desperate need for faith within your heart. There will be challenging times that cause us to question our faith and our overall belief system. However, it's important to have faith in your heart. And when you find yourself in doubt, you ought to look at your heart to guide you in the right direction. If you didn't like uh, what Solomon said there in Proverbs 3, then go over to Proverbs 4. Chapter 4, verse 23, Solomon says again, above all things, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. It's important uh, to be able to be able to distinguish between uh, what is right and what is wrong. Protect your heart uh, from evil uh, by not subjecting yourself to negativity that you may encounter. It's important uh, to know what is good and what is bad for you. Uh, if you did not like how Solomon said it, then go over to listen to what David said in Psalms 51 verse number 10. David says, create in me a clean heart, O God, uh, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Uh, have purity within your heart uh, and never allow others uh, to take your wishes uh, and beliefs because it's important uh, that you recognize what is good uh, and what is bad. Uh, beloved, there is a question here and the question is what does it mean uh, when I say I am a Christian? Uh, many people think that uh, just because uh, I belong to Mount Moriah Baptist Church uh, that makes me a Christian. Some people believe uh, that because I was baptized uh, that makes me a Christian. Uh, some people believe uh, that being religious uh, and being morally and ethically clean uh, is enough to call uh, myself a Christian. Uh, but when you think about the word of Christian, uh, you need to define uh, what Christian is uh, before you declare uh, that you are a Christian. Uh, well, when I think about the definition uh, of the word Christian, the word Christian uh, literally means the Christ one. Uh, yes, the name uh, Christian was given back in uh, Acts chapter 11 back at, at Antioch. Uh, and biblical history tells us uh, that it was a term of contentment. Uh, yes, it was a term uh, because the people of Antioch uh, were pagans uh, and the pagan people uh, were a by the clean lifestyles of the preaching and the believing of those who were following after Christ. And it gave, they gave them the name Christians, which means that they was trying to live a Christ-like life. And the reality is some of us ought not never call ourselves Christians because the life we live is not like Christ. Many of us live a life that's like something other than Christ. And I can't tell you what that name is while I'm standing in the pulpit, but I can tell you it's not the name Christian. Instead of insulting these believers, it perfectly summed up the image that they were attempting to protect their lost neighbor. So Christian or Christ-like one or Christ one means that I am trying to live like Christ. But I can't live like Christ if my heart ain't right. Contrary to popular belief, just going to church cannot make my heart right. Being a good person does not make my heart right. Just calling on the name, calling the name of Christian just does not make my heart right. To be a Christian means I got 
to become like Christ. Uh, yes, and too often we lump all uh, what we think all saved people under the title Christian. Uh, but Christians really are people uh, who live and have the heart of Jesus the Christ. So here, chapter 16, the gospel according to Matthew, Jesus is in a conversation with his disciples. He's talking about uh, his impending death. He immediately rebukes Peter because Peter uses, Jesus uses the event uh, as an opportunity to teach the disciples about the heart of real Christianity. Because as individuals, uh, many have no idea what Christian life is supposed to be about. And let me pause parenthetically and suggest that there is an indictment on the universal church because the universal church has showed us everything except what it means to be a real Christian. The universal church has showed us how to cuss each other out. The church has showed us how to sit beside one another and not even say good morning. The church has told, all told us how to speak on Sunday morning and talk about each other on Sunday evening. That's not the life of a Christian. The church has messed us up and showed us the wrong way of Christianity instead of showing us the right way. Uh, and how our heart needs to be uh, in order for us to call uh, ourselves Christians. Uh, you need to understand uh, that when this life is over, uh, the Lord is not concerned uh, with this brick and mortar. Uh, he's not concerned uh, that your name is on the stained glass window. Uh, he won't be concerned uh, that you donated enough money to repay the people. Uh, he won't be concerned concerned uh, that your name is on the pew. Uh, he won't be concerned uh, about the amount of checks that you wrote. Uh, but when this life is over uh, and the Lord comes back from the great beyond, uh, he's looking to see uh, if your heart is right. Uh, and if your heart is not right, uh, then beloved heaven uh, will not be your home. Uh, I'm thinking I needed some help this morning. So I called on a friend of mine uh, by the name of the late Dr. Maya Angelou. Uh, she had a poem that said, uh, when I say I am a Christian, uh, when I say that I am a Christian, uh, I am not shouting uh, that I'm clean living, uh, but I'm whispering I'm lost uh, and now I'm found and forgiven. Uh, Maya said, when I say uh, that I am a Christian, I don't speak of this with pride, but I'm confessing that I stumble and I need Christ to be my God. Dr. Angelo said, when I say that I am a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong, but I'm professing that I'm weak and I need his strength to carry on. She said, when I say that I am a Christian, I'm of my success. I'm admitting that I fail and need God to clean my mess. Maya said, when I say that I am a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are far too visible, but my God believes I'm worthy. When I say I am a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have shared my heartaches, so I call upon his name. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not saying I'm holier than thou. I'm just a simple sinner who received God's good grace somehow. I wonder if there's anybody here who says I don't have it all together. I mess up every now and then. But my heart is still in the right place. I may not meet your definition of what a Christian ought to be. But when I look into the word of the Lord, I understand that it's not about me. But it's all about Jesus the Christ. And if I'm going to live a life that's 
pleasing uh, unto the Lord. Uh, Matthew didn't say it. Uh, John didn't say it. Uh, Mark and Luke didn't say it. Uh, but Jesus said, uh, if you uh, want to come after me, uh, you got to deny yourself. Uh, forget about uh, what you want. Uh, pick up your cross uh, and follow me. Uh, is there anybody here uh, who can testify uh, that I followed uh, a whole lot of people? Uh, they led me uh, straight to hell. Uh, but I thank God uh, that the Lord, uh, he saw me. Uh, he heard uh, my cry. Uh, he reached way down uh, to the lowest uh, of the low. Uh, he picked me up, uh, he turned me around, uh, he placed my feet uh, on solid ground. Uh, I got the heart of a Christian. I might not need your definition, but Jesus said, Great, if you want to come with me. You gotta forget about yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. So, the heart of a Christian in order to figure out where your heart is. Jesus said, first of all, you gotta find your heart. Jesus, I know where my heart is. It's medial of my chest. Jesus said, I ain't talking about that. I ain't talking about your left ventricle or your right ventricle. I ain't talking about that heart. You gotta find your heart. Verse 24 said, if any man wants to come after me, Jesus is to be the heart of everything and all that we do. If we're going to experience the power of biblical Christianity, let me pause right there, because some of us, uh, we want to have religious Christianity. Uh, and you can be religious by yourself. Uh, but if you want to have biblical Christianity uh, in your life and in your church, uh, then we got to find our heart. That means that we're going to have to discover what it means to make you tick. We begin this process by asking ourselves a series of questions. Mount Mariah, let me ask you a question. Why are you here today? Did you come this morning out of expectation? Did you come this morning out of a duty? Did you come this morning out of happiness? Did you come to be seen? Or did you come because you love the Lord? And you love to worship Him? Let me suggest to you that the only reason you should have showed up this morning is because there is a name that I love to hear. And I love to see this word. It sounds like music in my ear. It's the sweetest name on earth. I did come so you could see what I had on. I did not come even though y'all sound real good. I did not come to hear the choir sing. But I came because I love the Lord and he heard my cry. I came because I needed to be in God's presence. Why?
And most of us have forgotten the people that started it. But I suggest that the reason Mount Moriah exists is because we exist, number one, to exalt a sovereign savior. We exist to edify the saints of God. And we exist to evangelize to the sinners. Sounds like our church vision, don't it? All these things ought to be seen in the life of Mount Moriah Baptist Church. When Jesus said, come after me, he is issued by Jesus. And it registers differently depending on your heart. When Jesus said, come after me to a person that's lost, it says Jesus can give me a new heart. To a person that's saved, it says Jesus can refocus my heart and bring me where I need to be. You gotta find what your purpose is of following after Jesus. Are you following him just so you can get what you want? But I heard the songwriter say, I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, because God, I need you more and more for my season saints. The old church would say, I need thee. I need thee every hour. Oh, bless me now. My Savior. Is there anybody here who can say, I need the Lord in my life. I need the Lord every day. Every step of the way. I need thee. In order to have the heart of a Christian, number one, you got to find your heart. But in order to have the heart of a Christian, not only must you find your heart, once you find your heart, secondly, you've got to focus your heart. He says to his disciples, come after me. If we really are in love with the Lord and his central love for our heart, there should be a desire to be where Jesus is. I figured y'all wouldn't understand it. So let me call a witness coming, David. In Psalms 42, verse number one and two, David said it like this, as a deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul after you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. Where shall I come and appear before God? Jesus said it like this, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You can go where you want to go. You can do what you want to do and you can follow what you want to follow. But the Lord is saying, if you want to be my son and if you want to be my child then you need to follow after me. Because where where he goes, I will follow. Psalm said, Oh God, my heart is fixed. Is there anybody here who says, My heart is fixed and my mind is made up? David said, One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord to behold. To inquire in his temple. Can I call my friend Paul? Come here, Paul, and tell him what you said. Paul said, Brethren, I count not myself to be apprehended, but one thing that I do, I'm forgetting what's behind me, and I'm looking towards the prize of the high call that's in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in me which is also in Christ Jesus. I'm out of here now but I came this morning to ask you a question.
question. Do you have the heart of a Christian? Is your mind made up? Jesus said, if any man wants to follow me, deny himself and take up his cross. What do you mean? Take up your cross. Do I? carry a cross like the Lord carried. No, but in this life, when you carry your cross, you got to clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus. Do not think about how to satisfy your flesh, but deny yourself and follow him. When I Take up my cross. I can say, like Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives on the inside of me. Is there anybody here who knows that when I take up my cross, Jesus said that when you take up your cross, you are on your way to following him. You've got to learn how to walk the walk, work the work of them that sent me. Why this day? For nighttime is coming. I'm out of here. But can I call one more witness? Come here. Sam Cook, Sam Cook said, must Jesus bear the cross of all and all the world go free. There's a cross for everyone. There's a cross for me. In this life, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, for I have
sad part about it is we're trying to follow everything, every trend, every way, but we don't want to follow Jesus. Jesus said in that 24th verse it's very indicative he said if that's a conditional phrase for my English teachers I believe it's a prepositional phrase if 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 I'm not going to say it, Brother Rousey. If. Yeah. He know what I'm talking about. If. Yeah. If yeah. any one of you. Come on. Yeah. If. Yeah. Jesus says, Jesus is saying here, yeah. I know everybody don't want to. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Right. Just because they showed up on Sunday morning don't mean they want to. Just because they sing on the choir don't mean they want to. Just because they're a musician don't mean they want to. Just because he's the pastor don't mean he wants to. Just because he's a deacon don't mean he wants to. Just because he's a trustee don't mean he wants to. But just by case, just in case, if there's any one of y'all who wants to follow me, take up your cross, deny yourself, forget about your feelings, forget about your thoughts, forget about your circumstances. Well, Pastor, they didn't do it my way. That means you ain't trying to follow Christ. Well, Pastor, they didn't call my name. That means you ain't trying to follow Christ. Well, Pastor, I gave my money to you. If you want to follow Christ, you ain't worried about your name being called. You ain't worried about a pat on the back. If you want to follow me, forget about yourself. If you want to.
put the word, take up your cross down. Number one is because he was on his way to the cross. He was sharing with his disciples. He was on his way to die. And Jesus had to try to make this thing real. Now remember, in a couple of weeks, Jesus is going to be in the high court, getting ready to be crucified. And remember, everybody followed Jesus to Calvary. They saw Jesus carrying the cross. The reason Jesus would use the symbolism of the cross in this conversation was because if you understood how heavy the cross was, Jesus carried your stuff. Jesus carried your lies. Jesus carried your sins. Jesus carried your cussing. Jesus carried your alcoholism. Jesus carried your drug addiction. And what he was trying to tell them, if you really want to be like me, you got to be willing to carry some heavy stuff, even some stuff that don't belong to you. But because I'm willing to follow him, the Bible said that we should bear the burdens of which means I gotta carry some of your burdens and you gotta carry some of my burdens. I gotta carry some of your lives. You gotta carry some of my lives. If you want to follow him, take up the Are you willing? Are you willing to carry somebody else's stuff? Pastor, I got my own stuff. I got my own issues. I got my own messed up marriage. I got my own wayward children. I got my own sick parents. I got my own crazy job. I got my own crazy family members. Jesus says, I know. Because I sit high and look low. I see everything you can. But if you really want to follow me in the midst of what you already got, are you willing? to pick up another load. Because here's what I happen. If you are willing to pick up another load, what I would do is when you pick up his load, I'll shift your load onto somebody else who's willing to pick up your load. And when they pick up your load, I'll shift that load onto somebody else because I am God and I've carried everybody's load. But I know you can't handle what I can handle. So I will not put more on you than you can bear. But what I will do is I'll shift the load so you won't become unbalanced. And when you fall, I'll pick you up. When it gets heavy, I'll help you bear your load. Cause you gotta have the heart of a Christian. And when the load bear down so heavy, the weight upon the weight upon my brow, there's a sweet relief in knowing.
you are not willing to be a low bearer, then what do you come to church for? Why'd you show up on Sunday morning? Because all of us in this room are carrying something. And the reason that the Hebrew writer said, forget not the assembly together of the saints, presupposes that the saints are on one accord. And if we're on one accord, the reason we all need to show up is because we all got a load. I see it, Jesus. I'm trying to make it as plain as I can. And one person is not able to bear the load. That's why he said, I won't put more on you than you can bear. You got to carry some of it. But I know you can't carry it all by yourself. So my thought pattern is, I'm going to put you in a place with some other people who themselves got some heavy loads. Because I've got to balance the weight. And my uncle used to drive a truck. If I have any truck drivers. And every now and then, when the load shifts in the back of the truck, he will have to pull over on the side of the road so he can readjust the load. Because uh, if the load is too much on one side, it'll cause the truck uh, to pull top of over. Uh, and what Jesus is saying uh, is some of us, uh, we got a whole lot in our load. Uh, and I need to connect with some other people so I can shift the load so we can balance this thing so I can help you be accountable and you can help me be accountable and we can pull this thing together that's why the Bible said we can do more together than we can do apart do you have the heart of a
doors of the church open. The doors of the church open. 